All right, everyone, welcome back into another props video. Give me a touch on the top prop bets for the two games on this NFL Saturday. Let's go in and get into it. So I already did a preview video for uh, both days of football, Saturday and Sunday. That video is out there already. I did more of a deep dive there. This is going to be much more touching on just the Saturday slates. It's going to be a much more faster paced video uh, than the other one. I do want to start out with just calling out kind of why or why not props or good props on the day. I'm going to start out with the Baltimore Ravens. We can see we're getting about three really good prop bets on the day right now, likely for under fantasy score, Bateman for over fantasy score, Justice Hill for over fantasy score, and then potentially Lamar Jackson under pass attempts. Let's go in and talk through that. And so looking at it, guys, likely is one of those props that we didn't have at the start of the week because Mark Andrews was questionable. He is now going to sit. So likely is going to get the start. We know that. And so when we look at his snap counts, we can see likely is typically averaging around 70 to 80 percent of the snaps for the Ravens he's kind of stepped up and been a pretty solid and consistent fantasy producer for them on top of that this is a pretty good matchup as well we can see he's been a very consistent fantasy producer in terms of crushing the over here now we will see a little bit too much of touchdown dependency there one touchdown two touchdowns zero against the Niners one one and so that's the thing and I, I bet this is why the unders being heavily favored because he's been on this hot stretch and so because of that the data is saying he's not going to score a touchdown thus he's not going to get the over like the receptions haven't been there that much and so i could kind of get behind that don't get me wrong but this is a very good match of going against houston like this is one of those weird situations where i also do nfl dfs he's going to be a tight end that i'm most likely playing there but i also probably betting his under fantasy score so it's a weird part of the week but the, all in all the data says that that's a good prop bet i'm not going to argue it Although I will say, if you guys want to not use that one, then the Rashad Bateman prop is going to be one that pops up into a much more likely prop bet for you guys to bet on. So Bateman is someone that, for the most part, has been playing about 50% of the snaps for the Ravens. And Houston isn't really the best matchup. They're not typically a matchup that you want to be targeting too much. That being said, Bateman has been a little bit hit or miss in terms of getting his over fantasy production. I will point out, six targets, four targets, six targets, four targets. Like He has been getting a decent target share. And so for us to begin his line at this low of a line, I can get behind that. And it is one of those things where I do think it kind of correlates. If likely is not getting his over fantasy score, I do think that means that Bateman is going to be more likely to get his over fantasy score. Do I exactly agree with the data on these two? Am I excited to bet them? No. But I will say that I would agree that it would correlate decent now the next one I, I also find this one extremely interesting so justice hill for over seven for a fantasy score this is fascinating so justice hill is someone that is a little bit game script dependent some games he could get 60 some games he could get 30 percent of the snaps if they're playing from behind if you think houston's gonna be winning well this would probably be a prop bet for you and that's simply because he should get used in the passing game like three or so targets that'd be the biggest thing there now he is kind of a, a big play type of guy i don't know personally guys to me this one does does feel like much more of a Gus Edwards day than a Justice Hill. It's weird. We're getting three really good prop bets for the Ravens. And I don't really like any of them. Like I, I, I probably will bet them, but I don't love it. Gus Edwards, that's a little bit too high. Uh, Zay Flowers, it's a little bit too high, but we're seeing uh, prize picks is definitely undervaluing it compared to the projection data, the average sportsbook line, and underdogs. So maybe there's something there. Uh, same thing here with Lamar Jackson for fantasy score, where underdog definitely has a little bit higher than prize picks. So slight edges there, but all in all, Baltimore is not a team that I like prop wise for the most part. Now we get into Houston. We are getting Dalton Schultz for under fantasy score. I'm okay with that one. I can get behind that. And then CJ Stroud as well. This is a much better prop at an underdog though. But I would say that these two correlate. So you could definitely bet Dalton Schultz under fantasy score on underdog. CJ Stroud under fantasy score on underdog. Those two are two bets that correlate pretty well. Then from there, we got Brevin Jordan for under fantasy score. I, I think we can all understand why. He is not someone that typically plays a lot of snaps. Now he has over the past few weeks or so. He did when Dalton Schultz was out. Don't get me wrong. And I do think that this is partially because well just out of need they're playing Xavier Hutchinson John Mechie about 70% of the snap this is kind of like Noah Grayish where they kind of just need another healthy body that they can rely on and he made a play that I've never seen him may make in that playoff game I'm like where has that cut been your whole career that was I don't get shocked that much just with watching a bunch of film and whatnot like it's just things typically go as expected for the most part that was one of the most shocking plays that I've seen this season and it's it was kind of just a normal play it's just because we haven't seen that from him that much now my issue and I, and I agree with the data here that was his only 
target in that game. And really prior to him, he's hit or miss. Let's just put it that way. He can score a touchdown. They might scheme up a play for him to score a touchdown, but more times than not, he's going to get under that fantasy score. So it's not terrible. Then from there, CJ Stroud under pass attempts. I don't know if I exactly agree with that. Personally, I think the Ravens are going to win. Uh, you always worry about Russ with teams like that, where they've sat for two weeks now, but all in all, I think the Ravens are going to win. So I don't, I don't really want to be touching this where the game script would tell us he's going to be throwing it more than that. Nico Collins under fantasy score. I mean, we're getting a lot of correlated bets for Houston. I don't mind that, but all in all, probably feels like we're forcing those a little bit. Again, I think I like this for underdog here. Let's go and jump into the other game here. we got the Niners and the Green Bay Packers. Let's start out with the Niners here. So we're getting Jawan Jennings for over his fantasy score. We can see it's basically a push at four. To me, this isn't as big as an edge as it is saying. All in all, I don't mind it. I mentioned four... <sighs> Um, on the preview video that Christian McCaffrey, I figured that uh, his full touchdowns wasn't being pulled in properly anytime TDs or we just, we weren't getting that data just yet for his fantasy score. That was true. So now it's at 1.5, but it is favoring the under there still. About a 54% chance for him to get the under. Now, whether you guys agree with that or not, that's fine. It, it I don't like buying the under four CMC, but if you look at it, guys, I know that this was something that popped in. Like really, I think it has been one of the more favorable bets. I think over the past five weeks where the under was being favorited and obviously crushed it against Arizona, Baltimore, that was close, but Washington, Seattle, Philly all got the unders there. And I, I don't remember the exact details. I just remember him popping up and it was just like, oh, that's ugly. We don't, we don't really, it was Seattle. I know for sure it was Seattle. It's like, we don't really want to trust this under. Yeah, it was, it was against Seattle for sure, uh, but it's ugly, right? We don't like doing that. It's kind of one of those, you, you close one eye and you kind of click it, but actually don't do that. So you make sure to click the correct one. Um, the amount of times I fat fingered a bet on prize picks is annoying. Uh, but all in all, that's an okay one. We're seeing Brock Purdy for over rush yards. I'm actually okay with that if you guys want to run that out. Uh, Debo Samuel for over 4.5 receptions. That's one I think will be fluctuating between five and four and a half, really just depending on uh, the public's perception of that prop to the point where the sports books then have to boost the their odds. Thus, prize picks will have to bump up to five. And then, then the reverse will happen where people start to bet the under because then the that's pretty much just, that's kind of what I, I see happen. Uh, but all in all, not a terrible prop. I do think he's going to get a few short yardage uh, receptions that's it's kind of a way you can beat the Packers easily um is by getting the ball to someone like Debo Samuel quickly and easily now I will say George Kittle I do like his over receptions I just think George Kittle is going to have a good game I think you beat the Packers up through the middle of the field but right now none of the props that we're getting for George Kittle are really popping up that much now let's go ahead and shifting into the Packers and so looking at the Packers guys rush yards if you guys want to do that one I, that's fine uh but a lot of the Packers props that we were getting all the data is fair in the under and I get it like the Packers are dogs in this game. It makes sense. For me, Aaron Jones, the game kind of... I Well, the game is going to be decided by the going, coin flip. I think if the Packers win the toss and elect to receive the football, it's going to be a close game. If they don't, I think the Niners might put it to them. All in all, though, there should be a positive pass script, most likely. And so I don't like the fact that Christian Watson's under is being favorited here. This is the first time, maybe all season, that he hasn't have a, had an injury destination. And so if he is actually good to go and not playing like only half in the snaps, if he can get up to, let's say 40 out of 56 or so, then I don't want to be betting the under there. This is really a bet on if you think he's going to get the snaps or not. And per the injury report, he is good to go. And so to me, this seems too low, especially for a guy that really is their best playmaker, if you will, their biggest big play receiver, I guess I should say. That is one that I don't want to touch, especially in a in game script in which Vegas thinks the Packers are going to be playing from behind. I also don't want to touch Luke Musgrave. I would much rather bet Tucker Craft for over his fantasy score at 5.5. The data does not agree. I don't know. I've always thought Tucker Craft was the better tight end. Snap wise, Tucker Craft got a little bit more. Luke Musgrave just, I don't, all in all, we probably should just stay away from both of them. This is, I don't like the Saturday guys like last week my thoughts on the slates matched up with the data it was very easy to give you guys bet slips I, I love those weeks a lot of people in the comments get confused they'd be like what is this guy saying does he like these prop bets or not I'm like I don't like that the data that we use to be successful week in and week out to have profit in the long term isn't agreeing with my thoughts like that to me is hard to give you guys advice because all in all the day is gonna be right more times than not I don't want to contradict it too much sure you can win here and there and one that I do like a little bit more than the data is Wix for over his fantasy score and i would say romeo dobbs for under fantasy score that that very much seemed like an outlier game for romeo dobbs i would much rather bet on watson to get his over fantasy score and wish to get it over their fantasy score because personally i think they're a little bit better and same thing with tucker craft i'd rather bet him to get over 2.5 receptions but all in all what i'm seeing here is that the bets that i would want to be on for the packers 
are not bets that the data is exactly telling us to be on. And that's obviously we don't love that. So personally for me, guys, I think this is a much better underdog day. And we're, we're going to see that the, the data is also suggesting that as well. So I don't know if we need to go Jaden Reed for over his fantasy score, but we are seeing maybe Lamar Jackson and Zay Flowers for under fantasy score, maybe Dalton Schultz and CJ Stroud for under their fantasy score. And those are ones where we're looking, we're seeing underdog is a little bit more aggressive with those lines. If you don't like those prop bets, you could definitely just do the opposite, but do that on prize picks. That's a decent way to add or hedge these this bet slip that I'm about to show you. So just a reminder, if you guys do choose to use this bet slip and you haven't used underdog before, just use the promo code nine to five. That'll just kick back some money to the channel. It's just a way to help support the channel. Uh, a lot of people have been doing that. I do really appreciate that. Uh, but it's going to show you guys the bet of the day. And here it is for underdog. Now, the only issue that I have with this is that it's not going to be a full payout because we are doing correlated bets. So Dalton Schultz and CJ Stroud under fantasy score that correlates. So they're going to knock it down. And then same thing here with these two, like those two correlate. So they're going to knock it down. And then to make it a five slip bet, I did go with Brian Ayuk for over his fantasy score. I don't really want to give you guys a prize pick slip because I don't necessarily agree with those ones that we are getting, but I did want to show you guys the data for prize picks. I know most of the audience is coming for prize picks. So if you guys liked or disliked any of those prop bets that were popping up as good bets, by all means, if you guys like the ones that were popping up, use them. Don't feel the need to force in a bet or anything like that. But that's going to be all for today's video. Uh, make sure to give a like and subscribe to the channel. Everyone hit that notification bell as well. If you guys want access to the tools that you saw in this video, head on over to 95sports.com. Gets you access to the prize picks and underdog uh, tools as well as fantasy golf tools. Thanks for watching. And as always, let's keep cashing.